it's Madara. Sometime back, I posted a video of me responding with I don't know, which is a TikTok trend to some of the general questions that get asked from PhD students. It was obviously a joke, but I did receive some really good questions about how to do a PhD or how to get into a PhD program from some of you after posting that video. So I thought of taking a moment and answering a few of the questions that I have received and I've seen um, that get asked frequently. So here we go. The first question is, as an undergraduate student, how can I better prepare to get into a PhD program? You can work as a research assistant. You can always get in touch with professors and ask them if there is any ongoing research projects that you can be part of. Um, you could also volunteer. Sometimes senior graduate students look for undergrad students to help out with their research projects. Um, you may not necessarily get paid for that, but if you have had no experience at all, I would say it's okay to volunteer if you're an undergrad uh, and if you have the time. I, when I was an undergrad, I, I did a research assistant job. I just wanted exposure and a little bit of introduction to what goes on behind grad studies. So I would say working as a research assistant or volunteering as a research assistant is a very good way to get some exposure to what goes on in grad studies. Uh, the other thing is take research courses in your undergrad and your master's if you are thinking of doing um, a PhD. That would really introduce you to the basic knowledge of research and you can kind of test out if you like it or not. The more you do in undergrad, the more you're exposed to when it comes to research, you will know very quickly if you like it or not. So I would say before you start a PhD, do some of the work, work that is similar to what goes on in a PhD and see if you like it. Because I know people who do not like uh, some of the components of the PhD, including myself. <laughs> How do I find the right supervisor? A good question. I don't think there's a right answer to this question, but there are many ways. First is to email potential supervisors that you might be interested in working with, and then definitely, definitely, definitely have a phone call with them or meet with them and talk to other students who have been supervised by this uh, supervisor that you're interested in. I think that's extremely important because getting other students' feedback can tell you a lot about what their experience was like and uh, things that you may not see by having one-on-one -on -one interaction with the supervisor. So definitely talk to past students. Next question, what is the earliest age you can start a PhD? I think this can depend on where you are. So I, in Canada, started at 23. And that's because I finished my undergrad and then right after that I did a two-year master's uh, and then right after that I started the PhD, so I was 23. I have friends who have uh, finished the undergrad, started the master's, didn't finish the master's, uh, transferred to a PhD program like a year into the master's program. That happens in some universities. Um, so then in that case, you would start your PhD at like 22. Next question. Does doing a PhD pay you? Yep. Um, if there's a research component to it, then uh, you can work as a research assistant or a teaching assistant as well. And um, most PhDs will cover nutrition and pay you as well. Uh, not for professional PhDs though. If it is um, a doctor of public health, for example, DRPH, um, they don't pay you. You will have to pay your tuition on your own. So yeah, most PhDs are funded and those funded PhDs have a research component to it. One thing I forgot to mention is that if you are a part-time PhD student, sometimes some universities may not provide you funding. So it is always a good idea to ask that university if you're switching from full-time to part-time, for example, if they would cover you uh, in terms of the funding that you were guaranteed. Some universities do not do that and you would have to pay for those terms that you go part-time on your own. Do you have to be published in order to get into a PhD program? How many publications did you have when you applied? I had three publications. Um, it's because I started doing research when I was an undergrad. So I had a paper published in undergrad or I started writing it in undergrad, but published it way later. Um, then I did one in master's, two in master's. Um, 
so that's how I had three, but I don't think it is a requirement for you to have publications uh, when you apply to a PhD. Now, the reason why having a publication would be beneficial to your application is because that shows that you know how to do research and that you have been doing research that have been peer reviewed by other scholars in the field and that have been accepted. It's just one way of showing that you have experience in uh, doing research. That is not the only way though that uh, you can show in your in your application that you have research skills. Uh, some of the things uh, could be research projects that you've done in your undergrad or your master's that even if it didn't have a publication that came out of it, you can always talk about that project. And the other thing is, I was going to say something else. Um, oh yeah, it doesn't have to be like a big research project. You could have been like a person who helped out a graduate student with their systematic review, like lit review, uh, or you could have been a second reviewer, or you could have been the person who did the literature review for uh, a research study. You didn't. You do not have to have done everything by yourself. That is basically doing a PhD. So you don't have to have done all of that in order to get into a PhD. You could have done certain parts of it. Talk about that. Talk about what you did and how that would be helpful in doing a PhD. Another thing about publications is that even though I'm saying that it is not a requirement generally, uh, to my uh, knowledge, um, different schools could look at it differently. So I would say get in touch with the school that you are applying to and or your supervisor that you're applying to and uh, talk to them and ask uh, what, what, what are your expectations. And if having at least one publication is um, one of them, then I would think that you need one. But having that conversation and finding out uh, would be a good move. Do grades matter? So if a university um, says that you need to have a specific GPA, like a minimum GPA uh, to to get into a program, I would think that you need that minimum GPA, but that's not always the case for every university. I would say get in touch with the admission committee or the person who's in charge of uh, accepting applications and ask them, um, how important is this minimum GPA? Have you ever admitted students who have had a lower GPA than the minimum required GPA? Uh, because you never know. I, I would never know what university um, does what it, it changes depend on the depending on the university or the country just because you don't have a perfect gpa does not mean that you cannot get into a phd program because a phd application looks at many different things one of the things that i talked about was research skills have you done research projects uh, in the past can you use what you've learned to describe well what you want to do in the future when it comes to research. All of that goes into making your application strong. Grades can fluctuate because of many reasons. It could be personal reasons, health reasons, just because of life. You can always improve your application by doing other things like additional research, um, find opportunities to get publications. So, you know, you can balance that um, loss of grade or the lower GPA with other things that show the admission committee that you can do research. As an undergraduate student from Sri Lanka, how can we do a PhD? I don't have a lot of experience with grad studies in Sri Lanka. I know a couple of people who are looking into doing PhDs in uh, in Sri Lanka. It's definitely, there are some challenges compared to doing a PhD in Canada, for example. It's hard to start when you're 23 because the system is just not made that way for you to be able to start a PhD when you're 23. I've heard of like one case in Sri Lanka where a PhD student was like 23 when they um, when they finished the PhD, but that was an exceptional case. Most PhD students get to do a PhD in Sri Lanka later in life um, because of so many barriers that, that are built within that education system. I think that's a different topic for another time, but generally, for a PhD, which also applies to PhDs in Sri Lanka, and I think it should. Um, the international standard of doing a PhD should be applied to there as well, I think. You would uh, want to work as a research assistant. I know that in Sri Lanka, you can also lecture without a PhD. Uh, I have friends who work as lecturers. Um, I think that's a very good opportunity. If you have that, take it. I think in Sri Lanka, you would have to, you would have to do a master's. Correct me if I'm wrong. 
uh, I don't know if you can do an undergrad and then directly go into a PhD program. Um, but I would say stay engaged in your field of interest. But since this question came up, I will try to answer that uh, somehow. I will find someone who can answer that question and uh, we will have a better discussion about doing a PhD in Sri Lanka. Is taking a break in the middle of doing a PhD a good idea? Yes, I know. Um, okay, well, if you need a break in the middle of your PhD, then there has to be a reason why you need that break. It could be due to family reasons, personal reasons, health-related reasons. If you really need that break, take that break. Now, certain things that could happen with taking a break is that you could forget things. Um, I took a significant amount of time off my PhD and when I came back, even the simplest things were gone. And it frustrates me so much that I have to relearn those things, like the simplest things. So I can't really ask my supervisor because those are so, so simple. I mean, I could, and I do ask them. They're not bad people. They're very, very, very good uh, supervisors and they will teach you that. And they know that I took a break as well. But something that will or could happen is that you might forget things that was like second nature to you because you were in touch with that continuously. Uh, so the answer is, if you need to take a break, you need to take a break and that's okay. And then when you come back, even learning the things that you've forgotten uh, wouldn't be a difficult job because now you're all refreshed and it's like a new start. So yeah, I would say take a break if you need to, need to take a break. Um, Next question, how long can a PhD be? So minimum three years, you can finish it in three years if you do full-time and don't take any breaks. Usually it's three to four. Um, Part-time usually is longer. I would, I would think five to seven years. I've heard of people doing it for 10 years too. Like if you're in your seventh year and you had no funding and you need to get an extension, that happens. PhD students get a lot of flexibility when it comes to their timeline. It's, it's something that's, um, that's very common. But I would say minimum three to four years, maximum six, seven, ten years. Ten is rare, I would say, but maybe I could be wrong. There's nothing with taking ten years to finish it if, you know, if you had a... I don't know if you had, like, things happening in your life. It's totally fine. Next question. Name three skills a future PhD would benefit from. Patience, which I don't have. <laughs> Discipline. Third, I would say persistence. Whatever your schedule is, just keep going. Um, so easy to say. <laughs> Try to get something done at least a little bit every day. That advice doesn't apply to everyone though. Like for me, I wanted to do a little bit every day, but that never worked for me. I like to have days where I don't think about it at all. So what I do is I work two to three days in a row and then I take a break and then I go back then take a break. So being persistent in the sense that whatever works for you, stick with that. And a bonus tip is have friends who are okay with listening to you and because I vent to a lot of my friends and they just listen and that's good enough. Aren't you going to be overqualified for most jobs if you have a PhD? Well, it depends on what job you want. Uh, if you want to become a professor in a university, that is a minimum qualification that you need having a PhD. Uh, if you want to, um, I don't know, uh, teach grade 12, yeah, then that would be an overqualification. So it really depends on what you want and why you're doing a PhD. So it's good to think backwards. Uh, okay, you want to get a PhD? Why? Do you want to get a job that requires PhD as a qualification? If the answer is yes, then you won't be overqualified. Um, yeah. That's the answer to that question. Is doing a PhD lonely? Yes and no. Yes, because after taking courses that are required for the PhD program, you kind of go your own way. You're working on your research question, but you can also work with people. It's not like, unless you move away from the university, it's not like you're completely isolated. Uh, it can get lonely, I guess, in the sense that the journeys um, of everyone could be different. You could have somebody who has a family who just, you know, come to university, get their work done and go home because they want to be with their family. Their schedule may not really match with yours. So in that sense, it could be lonely at times. But um, I would say if you don't have a lot of friends on campus or, you know, everyone's lifestyle is different, you can also join 
these communities um, that grad students have. There are like online study groups where you can all be online at the same time and study together. Uh, there are things like that. So, I mean, there are ways to get around the loneliness that is associated with doing a PhD. Does quitting a PhD have consequences on your career or reputation? Okay, first of all, not finishing a PhD is not a bad thing. Once you start it, you will learn a lot about what it is to actually do a PhD. It is not something that you've done before. It is not something that you, I mean, you know a lot about unless your parents did a PhD. So you will learn as you go. So if you feel like this is not for me, then don't be afraid of what people would say. I would say, choose what is good for you. I mean, consequences in the sense that if you want to become a professor, you really want to become a professor, let's say, for example, in Canada, a minimum requirement is that you need to have a PhD. If you don't have it, then I, I would think that it would be a challenge to become a professor. You could become a lecturer, I would say, with a master's, but you see what I mean? Like, there will be a challenge for you to get into that um, level of becoming a professor or an assistant professor if uh, the university that you're interested in, interested in uh, requires a PhD. As international students, do you still get paid when you're doing a PhD? Good question. I do know international students who have gotten into PhDs in different countries uh, who are completely funded. Their tuition is funded. International students also do pay more than domestic students, so I'm not 100% sure if their entire tuition is covered uh, with the funding or not. So a question for you, actually. If any international student is watching, comment uh, the country you are doing a P your PhD in. And if you like to share your university, go ahead and tell us a little bit about the funding situation you have. Does the funding that you get cover all your tuition and your living expenses or is it like partially covered? Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for sending your questions. I hope this video is helpful to at least one of you out there who is thinking of doing a PhD. If you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to DM me on Instagram at Madara Mara or comment below. That's it for now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good luck with your grad studies.